Did Chelsea Megan Fox T-Rex not cry enough tears to teach y'all to stop comparing yourselves to celebrities? Huh? Who wants to wake up to somebody and you're like, oh. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. Today, we are reviewing episodes one and two of Love is Blind Season 7. Did you hear me? Episodes one and two. But don't leave no comments based on information that you have from episodes three, four, five, and six. We have not seen it yet, okay? So please, no spoilers. Another thing, if you were here for Love is Blind UK, if you were here for Love is Blind US Season 6, and you didn't subscribe, and you're back here, what's... What's going on? What are we doing? What's the problem? Hit subscribe. <laughs> hit subscribe. Hit like. I'm so happy to have you here. So happy to be back for another season of Love is Blind. You already know how we do. We have a good time. So let's get right into this video. So the pods are open and baby, the previews have me shook, okay? In the cast reveal video, I was like, okay, I think we're gonna get a lot of love this season. I think we're gonna have a lot of couples this season, but it looks like there's going to be some heartbreak, some betrayal, some drama. And I'm here for it, okay? I'm here for the love, but I'm here for the mess as well. So by now, we all know the concept of love is blind, okay? You fall in love behind the wall. If you fall in love, you get engaged and you meet after you've gotten engaged. And then in four weeks, you get to the altar. You say, I do, I don't, you know, whatever reason. It's not me, it's you. We need more time. Your breath stink, whatever. That's the concept of this show. So as the episode opens up, we get scenes of both the men and women discussing their grievances with the dating scene, how it's primarily based on looks and how the culture doesn't promote relationships, but it more so promotes situationships. Some admit that they've been more focused on their career and now it's time to focus on love. For example, Hannah, and we gonna get to her, but she says that she quit her high paying job to be here. Let's hope it's worth it, boo. So the pods are open, everyone starts dating, and the first person who gets the major camera time is Ashley, okay? She is 31 years old and she really wants to be married. She says that her parents divorced when she was six. Her mother got remarried. That marriage didn't work either. So she kind of feels like she has to be the one to have a successful marriage. Ashley goes on a date with Tyler. Tyler is 33 years old and he is a nuclear security officer. His voice... The first thing I noticed was his voice. Behind a wall, oh, his voice is giving. It's giving. Now remember, if you watch my cast reveal video, Tyler is the one who was paying for his girlfriend's bills, paying all her bills, and she was cheating on him the whole time. Yeah, that's Tyler. But off the bat, these two have a really cute banter. Tyler admits that he is very nervous and Ashley just seems like such a good vibe. She's super bubbly. Tyler is really chill. And I had to check the time on my screen to see how far into the episode I was because it was less than eight minutes. And I was like, okay, I love Ashley. That's my girl, love her. They both quickly bonded over their passion for wanting to help others. They discuss children, they're flirting, and they leave this first date all smiles. Next, we see Nikki D. He's 28 years old. He's a real estate agent, and he goes on a bunch of dates. And off the rip, you can see that Nick D is a flirt, okay? He's a smooth talker. He's very comfortable and confident on his dates. And all of the ladies also pick up on the fact that he's a smooth talker. So they're like, what's the issue? You seem to have no problem laying it on thick with the ladies. Why are you on this show? But but he does say that he's never been in love. He loves his family, he loves his friends, but he's never had that romantic type of love and he's hoping that he'll find that here. Next we see Nick and Hannah, they go on a date and immediately they bond on the fact that they're the two youngest people in the competition, well, in the pods. She's 26 years old and she works in medical device sales. Remember, this is the one who quit her job to be here. And I said this in my cast reveal video, I felt like Hannah was gonna be drama. <laughs> I said it, I felt it, I said it, and Hannah is gonna piss me off. But she did say that she's very blunt, she's very straightforward, but she's not mean. And at this point I was like, okay girl, we'll see. But I will say that this date with Nick and Hannah, this is the first time that I really saw Nick drop that smooth talker facade. And it seemed like he got a little nervous, a little vulnerable and more real. And he also later tells the guys back at the quarters that Hannah is at the top of his list. Next we see Hannah go on a date with Leo. Okay, and I'm so happy that I'm filming episodes one and two together because baby, by the time I got to episode two, get Leo off my screen. 
get Leo off of my screen, please. But my first impression of Leo was that he had a really good vibe. He seemed relaxed. He is 30 years old and he just inherited his family's art business. But Leo says that one of his biggest insecurities is a girl only wanting him for his money, okay? And he also says that's why he couldn't pass up this opportunity to fall in love in the pods, right? And at this point, I was like, I really like Leo's vibe. He seems laid back. He seems like one of those people who even if they have money, they're not like super flamboyant and throwing it in everybody's face and bringing it up all the time. Boy, was all wrong, but we'll get to that. Anyways, next we meet Brittany. She's 32 years old. She's an esthetician and she says that she's mostly dated athletes and the girl is very confident. I know what I want any of these guys to fall in love with me and marry me. Some people want to be boss babe and that's not how I want to live. I'm obviously a trophy wife. So on multiple dates, we see Brittany be very upfront with these guys, okay? She tells them she don't cook. She don't clean. She says she can't spell a couple of words. She says she's not gonna be the one with the brains in the relationship. So I immediately got what Britney was doing. She's playing the dumb, doe-eyed Disney princess, lost in the forest, where's my knight in shining armor role. That's what she's doing. I don't know anything. I just need a man to lead me. I am stupid. Can y'all tell I be cracking myself up? I really do. Now, I'm not saying that Britney is stupid. I'm saying that that is what she portrays. That is what she gives off to the men on these dates. Okay, next we meet Garrett. He's 31 years old. He is a physicist. And he says that he just has not prioritized finding love. And now he wants to put all of his time and efforts into that. He also says that people call him G instead of Garrett. I said, boy, are you a G? Are you a G? Because if you're not a G, we calling you Garrett over here, okay? So we see Garrett on a date with Taylor. Taylor is 29 years old. She is a policy advocate. And Taylor is another person who I liked immediately. She seems really nice again, really chill, not doing too much, just being herself, okay? They have a great date. They connect over science and hydrogen bonds and quantum equations and Heisenberg and physiologic, psychologic, optics, okay? Mm -hmm. And when they started discussing love and relationships in quantum physics terms, I was like, oh, baby where's jimmy jimmy get the ring these two getting engaged bring the ring wrap it up one thing that i do like about this season it seems like they're sharing notes both the men and the women when they go back to the quarters they're discussing the dates things that they like things that they don't like about each person that they dated they're comparing notes and i think that that's important it can be very helpful in this process because then you can see if someone is telling everyone the same thing like we've seen in previous seasons and then you know right here they got to give us a little cooking scene making sure that the viewers know that these people are being fed so no one gets sued right mm -hmm. so next we see tim how old is tim i didn't write down his age but it's probably on the screen i've always had a problem feeling understood by the women that i am interested in in the past i was i was a dog man i'm still playing games i was a boy in the head uh, but a man in the body so we see tim and he goes on a date with alex she is 32 years old and she is a fashion content manager they have some really light-hearted conversations and then they jump right into why marriage is so important for them and alex shares some information and says that her parents both of her parents actually have ms okay she says that her dad who remarried, right? His wife takes care of his every need, right? His every need. She bathes him, everything. She handles everything. And then she says that her mother never remarried, but her mother was in a committed relationship with her boyfriend for 15 years, right? But when her MS got really bad, Alex says that her mother's boyfriend just up and left. So that's why she feels like marriage is so important. Alex, baby, I hate to break it to you, but it seems like you think that marriage is the reason why your dad still has a companion to take care of him and lack of marriage is why your mom doesn't i don't know the situation but i will say this is emotions aside don't get in here talking about don't get in your feelings there's been studies on this men are more likely to leave their female partners when they are sick i think it's like seven times more likely okay this is whether they're married or not okay Women are more likely to stay with their partner when they're sick, right? So your dad has someone who is still taking care of him, who still loves him. Unfortunately, your mom's boyfriend left. But I don't want Alex to think that if she gets married, that is a foolproof way of making sure that she will have someone by her side if she gets sick. That's what we would hope, right? We married, we locked in forever. Statistically, that's not always the case. 
Hate to break it to you, baby. Okay, moving on. Tim shares that he is the baby brother of two older sisters. And unfortunately, both of his older sisters passed away. He said that his word is his bond and that he has seen a lot of death in his life. So he takes life very seriously. And he says he doesn't just want to get married. He wants to die married. Okay, I really liked this date because they went very deep into their personal lives very early on. And later we're gonna see them get even deeper. Next we see more dates between Tyler and Ashley A. We see another date between Garrett and Taylor. And you can see the love and the bond growing between both of these couples. Next we see a conversation between Brittany and Leo. And I'm like, why would you say this? Like I'm like really fortunate to not like have to worry about money at all. I grew up like very well off because I had all of these family tragedies. I got inheritance. Now I always stress how important it is to discuss finances in this process, discuss credit, assets, debt, all of that. It is extremely important. But there is a way to say that you live a comfortable life without giving too much information. Especially if you claim, if you claim that you don't want someone to be with you solely for your money. So why are you leading with your money? You know what Leo is giving? Leo is the type of guy to be like, you know what, you know, I got a lot of money. You know, I drive this type of car. You know, I got these watches. I live here. I could get you money is nothing. I could get you anything you want. And then the girl is like, oh, okay, well, can you buy me that purse? And he's like, what? What? And she's like, sorry, you just, you said that you can, that you would like to like buy me something. Okay, it's okay, forget it, don't worry about it. Oh no, we're not gonna forget about that. <laughs> You're a gold digger. Yeah, that's just the impression that I get from Leo because if you don't want someone to be with you for your money, why do you keep speaking about your money? But because Leo brought up his financial situation, Brittany says, hey, okay, I have a question. It's been burning in my mind. In a marriage, how would you want us to split the finances? Do you want to do 50-50? And Leo says that he wouldn't want to be the one paying for everything, but he says he does not believe in 50-50, okay? He prefers that both people contribute their fair share to the relationship because then it feels like they're both invested in the relationship. Brittany is relieved by that answer because she says the majority of the men that she's dated, they said that they were hardcore 50-50 and that's not what she wants. Brittany says she wants to be a kept woman. Okay, she doesn't want to be a girl boss. Brittany, I hear you. Still make your own money. Okay, you can be a little kept little girl. You can be a little trophy wife, whatever. Make sure you're making your own money though. So can't nobody put you out. So if things don't work out, you don't have to downgrade your life. Make sure you're making your own money, sis. See, Leo, and again, you can say you're an art dealer. We be selling a couple of paintings and stuff. We do okay. That's all you have to say. But all of this extra oomph that you giving it, there is no way that you don't want people to know you have money or that you don't want people to only date you for your money. And not only is he telling the ladies on the dates, he's in the quarters telling the men as well. My mom got cancer, died. My grandpa got cancer, died. My dad got cancer. My grandma got cancer, died and my stepdad got cancer all in three years and I inherited it. That is a horrible situation. I am so sorry for his loss, but again, he could have discussed the loss of his family without mentioning the inheritance and all of the extra stuff. It's just, he's saying one thing, but the way that he's moving and then in a couple scenes we see he got the guys playing with his Rolex and stuff like that. It's just not giving someone who genuinely does not want people to be focused on his job or his financial situation. And as for Brittany, she says that she wants to be fully taken care of. It seems like she didn't hear when Leo said that he would also want her to contribute. I guess she missed that part. <laughs> okay, I guess she totally missed that part. Then we hear Brittany tell Leo that Leo was actually her top pick for a baby name if she had a son. And Leo was like, you know, I don't really think that I would want a baby name after me. And Brittany's like, oh, that's okay. Don't scratch it. It don't matter. We can change it to Levi or something else. Brittany, you just made that up on the spot. I don't think that you wanted to name your kid Leo at all. The fact that you could just switch it like that. <laughs> Brittany is funny. And that's why I'm saying she's playing that role of, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. I'm just so stupid. But Brittany knows what she's doing. She's saying the right things. And because Leo keeps talking about his inheritance and all of this stuff, and Brittany wants to be a kept woman, I see Brittany saying whatever it is she needs to say to snag Leo, okay? I am stupid. I really believe that I'm like a, a unique, special person. Cause like, does she want me because she knows I'm like an art dealer and that like I have like money. I, I was learning Italian art when I was like six. Sprezzatura, uh, for example. And at this point I was like, yeah, I don't like Leo anymore. I don't like him anymore. At first I thought he was chill, but now he's just annoying. Maybe he'll redeem himself later, but as of now, man, I like him, no. 
And you can also tell that production feels the same way because they just let this man talk and talk and talk and talk to really expose how unlikable he is. But Leo is in a bit of a pickle because even though he really likes Brittany, he also has very strong feelings for Hannah. And we see that even on this date with Hannah, he's bringing up his job and he's saying, oh, I'm so happy that you didn't ask me all these questions about my job because so many people, they always ask me all about my job and I don't wanna talk about that. But with that being said, Hannah really does like Leo, but she says that she's not putting all of her eggs into one basket and she's still open to exploring all of the other relationships as she should, that's what this process is for, okay? Because remember, she also has a connection with Nikki D and she has his nose wide open, okay? He is in them pods smiling, cheesing from ear to ear. Child, then they start talking about looks, okay? And Nick D claims that he is better looking than Travis Kelsey. Maybe this Travis Kelsey, right? The one who's rocking that, that mustache. But uh, Travis Kelsey, when he was with his ex, I, I can't remember her name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. That Travis Kelsey? <laughs> oh, Nikki D. <laughs> you better stop. <laughs> you better stop. And why do y'all keep doing this? Have you not learned your lesson? Did Chelsea, Megan Fox, T-Rex not cry enough tears to teach y'all to stop comparing yourselves to celebrities? Huh? Have we not learned yet to stop doing that? Anyways, Nick does say that his celebrity crush was always Beyonce and now it's Scarlett Johansson. I love both ladies. <laughs> I love both ladies. They're both mm, fine, fine. So I feel you, Nick. They start speaking about kids and building a life together and you can definitely see that their feelings are growing stronger for one another. And it's really funny because when Hannah goes back to the quarters and she's gushing over Nick, all of the ladies are like, girl, Nick. Mm, mm. Next we see Taylor and Garrett, they get closer and they confirm with each other that their feelings are strong and they wanna get to know each other on a deeper level. They speak about their family, about their upbringing, and then the topic of ethnicity comes up. My mom's first name, it gives away part of like how I look, like my ethnicity. Interesting. So it's just, it is a new feeling for me. I, I've dated white girls, that's all I've ever dated. You are very like calculated about what you say and it's also like, what's she hiding? Okay, so this scene had me a little bit confused because I'm thinking, did you have these concerns before you found out that she wasn't white? Because we didn't hear any, maybe it was edited out. I always have to give grace with that. This show is edited and produced. We don't see everything. I know, I know, I know. But from what was on the screen, I didn't hear Garrett express any concerns about being secretive or anything like that until he came to the realization that Taylor wasn't white. Okay, now at this point, I was like, oh, hell no, Taylor, mm -mm, get out of here. And Garrett did say that he's only dated white women in his past. And I don't know if you wanna be that first time experiment for him, okay? I feel like it is important though, for couples to speak about their race, especially on this show, you want to know if someone is open to dating outside of their race. The last thing you wanna do is meet up at the reveal and it's like, oh, I don't date that. <laughs> what? So I do think that it is very important to have these conversations about race and culture before deciding if you want to move forward. But I guess Taylor wanted to stay true to the experiment and that's why she didn't want to reveal her name because that would give some insight into what she looked like. So I understand both sides of it. But Garrett does tell Taylor that even though she does seem a little calculating at times, his feelings for her are out of this world. And he says that he needs to feel like there aren't any secrets between them. He says that he doesn't need to know her ethnicity at this point, but he does want her to be more open with him. And the conversation does end with him saying that even though he doesn't know her ethnicity, he still wants to move forward 100% with her. Next, we get another clip of Tyler and Ashley. At this point, every time I see these two on my screen, I am just cheesing from ear to ear. I love these two. They're so cute. I hope that they make it far, okay? I hope they're married right now. They bond over horse riding and the idea of wanting to skydive the day before their wedding. They get into a deeper conversation and Tyler tells Ashley that his mother's father actually cut her off for having children outside of their race. Tyler's mother is Serbian and Tyler says that his mom really struggled financially because of this. He said that there would be nights where she would go to bed hungry because she literally had to choose between feeding the children or eating for herself. He says that she worked multiple jobs just to take care of them and he was about 10 years old when he found out that his grandmother, right, his mother's mother was diagnosed with cancer and this scene really had me choked up. It really did because hearing Tyler speak about his mom and how he couldn't comfort her during her loss, right, because Tyler's grandmother was all his mom had because the father cut them off. 
So they had a very close relationship and he felt a lot of guilt not being able to comfort his mom during that time, but he was just a baby. He was just a kid, right? And that is such a heavy burden to carry for so long, especially watching your mom struggle and then in her time of need, feeling like you can't be there for her in the right way. He said at the funeral, people were telling him to hug his mother, but he didn't know how to show that love. And you can tell that he carries that guilt with him every single day. He also said that it was hard for him to show that feeling towards his mother because they didn't really hug. They didn't really say, I love you, right? And he said that as a kid, he knew that he wanted to be married. He wanted to have a big, loving family. And that's usually how it is for a lot of us, right? We are healing generational curses, emotional traumas, and learning what not to do and how not to be from our experiences as a child. And from this conversation alone, I can tell that Tyler is gonna do his damn best to be a great husband and be a great loving father because that is not what he had. And Tyler, you better not make me eat my words or I'ma find you, okay? I'ma find you. But this conversation ends so well and Tyler tells Ashley, you my girlfriend and I'm about to go tell everybody. It was so cute. He walks out of the pods and he's telling the other guys, yo, that's my wife. That's my wife right there. Tyler, I love the confidence. I love the energy. And we later see him tell the other men back at the quarters that he has always been a protector, but this is the first time that he's been with a woman and she's made him feel safe. And that is big for him. Love it. Meanwhile, we see the guys there back at the quarters and Leo was telling them about his feelings for both Brittany and Hannah. And they say they don't really think that Nick even knows that Leo is talking to Hannah seriously, right? Nick D thinks that he has Hannah all to himself. Listen, I will say this about Brittany. The fact that all of the guys know that she is expensive, that lets me know that on these dates, Brittany is being upfront about her expectations. Listen, you're gonna have to pay the bills, okay? I think when dating, it is important to be upfront about your expectations. If the person is cool with it, great. If not, great. Let's not waste each other's time. Now, if you agree with her wanting to be taken care of or not is irrelevant. The fact that she's being straight up, I can appreciate it. Because if I was one of the guys in the pods and Brittany came to me and she's like, oh, I need you to pay for everything and that is not what I do. <laughs> Thank you so much, sweetheart, for telling me upfront, this will be our last date. <laughs> And that works because no one is wasting their time going on multiple dates with someone who they're not going to be financially compatible with. Child, next we see the ladies in the women's quarters and they're trying to help Hannah with her dilemma regarding Nick. All of them clearly do not like Nikki D, but Hannah is the only one who's still smitten by him and they're all confused as to why. They just, they don't get it. But Hannah does say that a lot of the things that Nick says, she doesn't believe because she can tell that he's very experienced when it comes to women. Like I said, he's a very smooth talker and that kind of scares Hannah. She also says that Nick has objectified her and saying that he can't wait to see her in her bikini bathing suit. And she also says that he seems like the type that would make her not want to go to sleep without makeup on. And the girls are like, yeah, that's a pretty big red flag. <laughs> and yeah, it is. All of the girls are like, cut him off, but Hannah still doesn't know what she wants to do. Meanwhile, we see Nick at the men's quarters and he's telling them that he's all in on Hannah. And he's trying to figure out Hannah's other connections because he knows that she's been going on other dates. Now, Leo is sitting at the same table during this conversation, but Leo is not giving up that information. He's just sitting there like... So next we see Hannah, she goes on a date with Nikki D and she immediately starts grilling him. Why are you here? Why did you need to do this? You couldn't have gotten a girl outside of this experience. And Nick is totally caught off guard, but he does say that he just wants to do things differently this time. And he's never been in love romantically before. He sees the loving relationship that his parents have and he wants that for himself. And he wants to fall in love with someone for all the right reasons and not the physical. You know, the same thing everybody says on this show. Oh, I'm all about looks, but I want a date for... Listen, yes, this show is called Love is Blind, but looks are important to people. You want to be attracted. I say this all the time. You want to be attracted to the person who you're with. Who wants to wake up to somebody and you're like, oh. God. oh. oh. No, right? You want to wake up next to somebody who you are attracted to, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But Nick's answer clearly isn't good enough for Hannah. And then we see Hannah get really real with Nikki D and she tells him that she's afraid that he is not going to like her when he sees her, okay? Nick tries his best to reassure Hannah that he doesn't give a F what she looks like. He said he's gonna love whatever he sees because he fell in love with her as a person, not for her looks. That answer is still not enough for Hannah and she lets him know that she's gotta let him go. Listen, in this instance, I'm gonna give Hannah a little bit of grace because this is a very hard decision to make, right? Nick has been talking himself up. Okay, we cannot forget, Nick has been talking himself up physically, okay? He has, he's like, oh, he played for this team. He looked better than Travis Kelsey. So in Hannah's mind, 
Nick is a fine ass motherfucker, okay? In Hannah's mind, Nick looks really good and she's intimidated by that. But Hannah, Hannah has also been talking herself up and she says that guys always go after her because of her looks and oh my God, they just all want me because I'm so fine. So they both been talking themselves up and now they're intimidated by each other's... <laughs> This is also funny to me because that's what y'all get. This show is called Love is Blind and y'all got in those pods and started comparing yourself to Travis Kelsey and talking about how hot you are. That's what you get. Hannah ends up dumping Nikki D and then she goes back to the women's quarters and she tells the ladies, look, I just dumped Nick, right? Now remember, Hannah thinks that she has Leo in her back pocket as her other option, right? But as Hannah is telling the ladies that she just dumped Nick, Brittany comes into the women's quarters from a date and she's like, oh my God, I had such a good time. Let me just play the clip. Oh my God. I was like, Leo, oh. I did not mean to say that. Oh my God, I did not fucking mean to say that. Ciao, so now Hannah is like, oh my God, what did I do? I just dumped Nick, okay? I thought my other option was Leo, but Brittany just came in here hype off of her date with Leo. What if Leo doesn't pick me? He picks Brittany and I done dumped Nick and quit my job to be here. So Hannah is stressed out okay all right so that was episode one now we're on to episode two so you know they're gonna introduce us to some new people which i'm happy about because there were a couple of people that i was like uh-uh we're not gonna see this person we're not gonna see that person so here we meet monica she is 36 years old and she is in tech sales and she says that in dating it's usually physical first and then you later realize that you don't have chemistry with the person that you're attracted to so she says that she's very attracted to men with big arms girl <laughs> same <laughs> So we see her going on a date with Steven. Now Steven is 33 years old and he is an electrician. Steven says that he's big on communication and emotional intelligence and he's into talking problems out until they're solved. They both speak on the idea of love not being perfect but being in a relationship where that is a-okay, right? Then Steven brings up the topic of cheating. He says that he is fully aware that everyone has a different idea of what they count as cheating but he says that he did slide into a girl's DMs with intention and he knows that that was emotional cheating and it was so I actually do like the fact that he views that as cheating because he is self-aware and honest enough to know that even though it was just a couple of messages he had all intentions of moving it forward even though he was in a relationship so he said that him and his ex went to therapy they tried to figure it out and he says that he's still in therapy till this day which is good. So Monica appreciates Steven's honesty and they continue to discuss and bond over the issue of cheating because Steven also says that he's been cheated on in the past and so has Monica. Then we hear Monica say, oh, I think you're being too hard on yourself. I'm like, girl, no, let him beat himself up. He was wrong. Yes, beat yourself up about it. Yeah, uh-huh. That's okay. But that date does end with Steven saying that he wants to take her on another date later tonight. And as soon as he gets back into the quarters, he tells the fellas that he is in love, okay? Meanwhile, Hannah and her annoying confused behind is back at the woman's quarters. She's still sad about her breakup with Nick because she thinks that she might've made the wrong decision and she's having some regrets. So she decides to set up another date with Nick D. Just all over the place. And Brittany overhears this, okay? So she goes on a little date with Leo and she tells him that she mistakenly said his name when she went back into the pods. Now, like I've been saying, Brittany is playing the role of dumb and she don't know what's going on. I don't think it was an accident. I don't. Tell me what you think below. But she does tell Leo that she didn't mean to say it and that wasn't her intention. She says she doesn't want any jealousy or any negativity going on in the quarter. So she feels really bad about it. But Leo says, look, girl, I ain't worried about none of that. All I'm worried about is you. All I care about is you, Brittany. And he tells her that he is falling for her. And then he says something that I guess he thought Brittany would take as a compliment, but it had me sitting looking at my computer screen like, did he just say that? Before our date today, like you were number two. And after our date today, like, I, I swear to God, you're like both number one. Like, I, We're I, both number one. Yes. Bruh. Definitely not that reassuring, but they do say that they can definitely see themselves being married to each other. But now Leo has a tough decision to make between Hannah and Brittany. So next we see Hannah, she goes on a date with Nikki D. And the fact that Nick even showed up to this date had me like, oh, Nikki D, maybe you are a nice guy because, oh baby, if that was him, I would have gave Hannah my whole ASS to kiss. Do you hear me? And maybe that's what he wanted to do, but maybe the producers was like, you better get your ass in there. <laughs> But on the day, Hannah does tell Nick that she thinks that she's made the wrong decision. She said that she feels like she probably broke up with him to hurt him before he could hurt her. And that she knows that was selfish. Hannah, 
baby. That's not cool. She also says that since she broke up with Nick, she can't think straight, okay? And she don't know up from down and it's really been bothering her. Then Hannah lets it slip, okay? That she broke up with Nick because the other girls in the quarters were telling her to break up with him. And Nick is like, wait, <laughs> wait, hold up. You broke up with me because the other girls told you to? And she's like, yeah. From there, if I was Nick, I'd have been like, I'm good on you. <laughs> I'm good on you. I need a grown woman who can make decisions on her own. Not someone who's just going to do what her friends tell her to do. Not good, okay? It's very immature of Hannah, but I mean, she is the youngest person there, so I guess. But I do appreciate Hannah being vulnerable in this conversation because she tells Nick that she feels like he might be disappointed in her looks, and she says that his confidence actually makes her feel less confident. Hannah, that is something that you, outside of the show, that is something that she is going to have to do a lot of work on because that is a very unhealthy way to enter into a relationship. One, you're gonna hang on to your partner's every word seeking approval. Do I look good? Am I, <laughs> right? And it's gonna be very easy for someone who has the wrong intentions to manipulate you, to break down your self-confidence even more, to make you feel like complete trash. So I really hope that Hannah does the work on building herself up because you can tell that this is a major issue for her. And I don't see it getting any better for her just because she gets into a relationship. I see it getting worse. Next we see Hannah on a date with Mr. Rolex and he finds comfort in knowing that she understands that everyone in this process is here to find their best connection and sometimes you might connect with more than one person. But you can see that these two are very much into each other. But Leo, didn't you just tell Brittany that you only want to focus on her? But you here laid up in the pods with Hannah? Mm. I think that this is the most play that Leo has ever gotten. So he, he like a kid in a candy store. He don't know what to do. Next we see Garrett and Taylor. They go on a date. They exchange gifts. She gives him an avocado plant. He gives her some honey. Taylor does mention on this date that her timeline for having children is about from five to seven years. Garrett says that he thinks that that's a little bit too long for him. And Taylor says that she feels like being with Garrett will pretty much make her want to have a child sooner. Um... Okay, girl, I wish that we got more of that conversation because we know what Taylor's preferred timeline is. We never really hear what Garrett's own is. What if his timeline is six months, a year, two years, three years? The last thing that you want to do as a woman is be in a, if you're not 100% sure that you want a kid right now, the last thing that you want to do is be in a relationship with someone who is pressuring you to have kids before you're ready to have kids. That is definitely a conversation that I hope we just didn't see the entirety of. I hope that conversation didn't end there because baby, y'all are going to be in trouble. In addition to speaking about children, I did like this part of the date because they do get into a deeper conversation regarding looks and ethnicity. And Garrett does say that he is excited to meet her and build a life with her. And later in this episode, he even sends her some sunflowers with a little note asking her to be his girlfriend, check yes or check no. It was very cute and I did start to warm back up to Jared. I was a little bit apprehensive because he was stuttering a bit too much after finding out that Taylor wasn't white. I, I, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to think. But then I'm like, okay, maybe Jared just grew up in a small town. Maybe he's only been around white women. So that's just all he's dated. But it seems like he is open to dating other ethnicities. And he is putting that pressure. He's applying that pressure on Taylor, letting her know that he wants to be with her. So I love to see it. And I cannot wait for them to meet in person. So next we get to see Marissa on a date. And I am so excited for my Aries sister. I was like, finally, we get to see her. She is 31 years old. She is a law clerk. Now she is on a date with what's his name Bodon okay some of y'all were in the comments of my cast reveal video well first let me say trigger warning okay trigger warning there were some allegations against Bodon of SA apparently the person is alleging that he SA'd them just a few weeks before he came to film it hasn't been proven we don't know if it's true I'm just letting y'all know the allegations that are out there, okay? And Bodon hasn't responded or made any comments on these allegations either. So I'm gonna just tell y'all what happened on the date, okay? So Bodon, he was born in the Ukraine. He came over to the States at a very young age. His biological father passed away and he was raised by another man who he says is pretty much his everything and who he tries to emulate every single day of his life. He tells her about his experiences in the Marine Corps and that he served in the Ukrainian war and he gets really emotional about it. And Marissa connects with him on this because Marissa has also served in the military. Overall, they have a great conversation and immediately I love Marissa's energy. I mean, she's an Aries, so like, <laughs> like, right? Right? No? 
Okay. Did you hit subscribe? Next, we see her go on a date with Ramsey. Okay, Ramses? What's his name? And in my cast reveal video, I did say that he gives plant dad energy, okay? I feel like he walks around burning incense, okay? With his toes wiggling in the carpet, right? And I get a good vibe from him. Now, I will say also that the preview at the beginning of episode one, he says something wild. He says something wild that had me looking at him like, Oh, you a F boy? But I guess we'll find out. I'm kind of shook, but again, I've only seen episodes one and two. Don't tell me what happens, okay? But for now, it seems like the two of them are really enjoying getting to know each other. He tells Marissa that she is his number one, and Marissa says that she is still open to exploring all of her options, but she feels strongly towards him as well, right? Ramsey opens up and he tells Marissa that he was previously married. He grew up very religious and he married his high school sweetheart. And as they got older, he started learning more about himself and discovering spirituality. And that put a hindrance on his marriage. They were both Christian, I think. And that makes sense, especially if the two of you got together primarily based on your religion. And then one person in that marriage starts to explore other religions or deviate from that religion. In most cases, that will cause problems and eventually a divorce. He also says that his dad has always been very critical of him. And Marissa says that when her parents divorced, her dad pretty much divorced the entire family, her and her three siblings, okay? So they both connect on that my daddy was an ish tip. Ramsey also says that he makes it a point not to necessarily follow what society deems as the proper gender roles. And I kind of got that vibe from the way he dresses. You know, he had that shirt on, okay? He got his little two braids and stuff like that. He definitely gives like, I do what I want. And he says that masculinity is what he makes it, you can see he is not trying to project this overly masculine type vibe, right? He's just chilling, like this is me, you like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. And I like that energy, it really comes off as very self-assured and confident. Marissa says that she really has no type physically, politically, okay? She says that she's dated a hardcore Trump supporter for three years, and then she says that she turned around and dated a progressive liberal guy, okay? So she says she just goes with the flow, she dates whatever, whatever you believe in, whatever you stand for, Marissa's cool with it. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. That's all I'ma say. Next, we get a date with Tim and Alex where they get to know each other even more and they speak on their upbringing. Tim being in the military, both of their connections to the nation of Islam and Alex tells him that her grandfather was actually big on not going to college. Tim speaks on the loss of his sisters, one who had lupus, and he says that he wears both of their high school class rings on a necklace around his neck. This conversation gets very deep and super emotional when Tim says this. I'ma say something to you that I have been thinking but I have not said out loud to anyone. I get to give my parents one more daughter. Um, thank you for sharing. Yeah, thanks for listening. I don't take it lightly how close I feel to you. Woo child, Tim had me bawling in this episode. Next, we get another date with Garrett and Taylor, and she reads him a love letter written between her grandparents in like 1953, okay, 1953. And I got a little tingle because all I could think about was the notebook with the letters, right? So cute, so cute. Now, I don't know if grandma and grandpa would approve of her reading their personal letters on Love is Blind, but that's what she did. And because the letter that the grandfather wrote was him proposing to her grandmother, I thought that Taylor was about to propose to Garrett and I was like, girl, you better not. <laughs> I said, girl, you better not. But she pretty much just tells him that he's been her number one and she can't wait for their future together. And at first Garrett is at loss for words, but then he gets up and he says the magic word. It's been an incredible experience just getting to know you. And here I've fallen in love with the person that you are. We're meant to be together. Taylor Morgan Krause, will you marry me? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. We have our very first proposal of the season. I don't think that these two, they haven't, they didn't say I love you, but I am happy for them and I cannot wait to see their reveal child. Next we see Monica and Steven and they speak on politics. A very, very important conversation to have, especially in this climate. I'll be completely honest. I voted for President Trump because I didn't like Hillary. I'm very much a centrist, but I despise the way that Trump handled his time in office. And I voted for Biden. I will happily admit that my first vote wasn't the most educated vote. And then we see them also speak on race. For the most part, I identify as white. For years, my grandmother on my dad's side, she told us that my dad's side of the family was Italian. Three years ago, my sister does an Ancestry.com. It's not even 0.3% Italian. Italian. Most of it is Nigerian, Congolese, primarily a lot of West Africa. Monica says that she's Honduran and African American mixed with some Cherokee. So she's mixed and the two of them definitely connect on that aspect. Next, we see my my favorite couple. Wait, have I called them my favorite couple yet? These two are my favorite couple. <laughs> These two are my favorite couple and they're about to eat. And Tyler says, hold up, let me say a little prayer, okay? And Ashley's like, oh my God, he praying. <laughs> 
And you can tell that that really touched Ashley. So then we see Ashley and Tyler, they have a little music session and then Tyler says this. I really love you. I want you to know you're safe and you're protected. I got your back for life. Ashley gets super emotional. I can totally understand why, but you can also tell that Ashley feels the same way, but she's being a bit guarded and I get it because it almost feels like this is too good to be true, right? Is he just saying the right things? Is he just saying what I want to hear? But Tyler has no doubts, okay? He goes back to the men's quarters and once again, he's telling them, yo, I'm in love with this girl. That is my wife, okay? And I just love the energy that Tyler is giving. It's so sweet. And it's not like friend zone sweet, like, oh, you're so sweet. No, 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 not friend zone sweet. Like sweet, like, oh my God, I wanna be with you sweet, like that. So chat is the reveal time between Taylor and Gary and I was nervous, okay? And they built me up. I checked the screen and said that I had like five minutes left. I said, okay, so we're gonna see this full reveal, okay? They built me up and then they left me on a cliffhanger. And the way I cursed, <laughs> The way I curse, like what? So that was the end of episode two. Don't tell me what happens. No spoilers, please. Okay, I will get my next videos out to y'all as soon as I can. Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe before you leave. Tell me all of your thoughts about episodes one and two below. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I appreciate each and every single one of you. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.